The Great Trek, or the Groot Trek in Afrikaans, was a large-scale movement of Dutch-speaking settlers whose ancestors had migrated to the Cape of Good Hope from the 17th century. Thousands, perhaps even a tenth of the Cape's white population, packed all their belongings into wagons and pushed them into the interior between 1835 and 1840. Now, before I go on, I'd like to cover some of the context. If you want to skip ahead to when I actually start talking about the Great Trek, then check the description for the time. On the 6th of April 1652, the Dutch East India Company's Jan van Riebeek founded the city of Cape Town, named Kaapstad, 50 miles to the north of Table Bay. Cape Town was used by VOC merchants as a way station for Dutch ships, both going to and returning from the Dutch East Indies. As time went on, more and more retired VOC members began settling around the city, some of whom worked on the land as farmers and would become known by the Dutch word boer, which means farmer. In 1814, when the Netherlands was part of the French Empire under Napoleon, the Cape Colony was invaded by the British Army, and it passed to the jurisdiction of the British South Africa Company. The older Dutch population and the new migrants from Britain didn't get along well, and the Dutch complained that the British weren't doing enough when their farms and families were being attacked by the local Ngoza tribe. They were horrified when slavery was abolished, and their farmhands were taken away without compensation by the British authorities. The situation reached boiling point when the British outlawed Dutch as an administrative language. In the meantime, there was not only the grandchildren of Dutch colonists living on the farms outside the city, but also French Huguenots, immigrants and refugees from the German states, and mixed race people with European, African and Asian ancestors. Before long, these groups amalgamated under the new racial identity of the Voortrekker, speaking some form of Dutch, which would later develop into Afrikaans. Their disdain for British rule was what binded them together. Many of them were humble farmers who earned their living through small crop cultivation and cattle rearing on their plaas, the Afrikaans word for farm. Some of these became known as trekboere, literally meaning sort of wandering farmers in Dutch. Even before the British occupation of the Cape in 1814, they had attempted to escape the administration of the Dutch East India Company to start an independent Boer Republic further inland. It must have been a very difficult decision for the Boers to decide whether or not to pack all their belongings into a covered wagon and leave their old life behind. Indeed, most people of Dutch descent in the Cape stayed where they were. The way into the interior was filled with dangers that the Boers would have to overcome on the journey. The two great rivers of South Africa, the Orange River and the Vaal, meandered across the landscape and were strewn directly across the Voortrekker's path. On the other side lay the Kalahari in the northwest, and in the northeast were the mosquito-infested swamps of the Limpopo River Delta. The Limpopo lies on the southern extent of the Tsetse fly belt, meaning if someone is bitten there they're liable to catch malaria. Even before the four trekkers could worry about these dangers, they would have to traverse the mountain range called the Great Escarpment. The lay of the land wasn't the only thing standing between the four trekkers and their goal. The mountains, the plains and the coast of Africa were full of hostile African tribes who would stop at nothing to keep the whites out of their land. The Boers were already familiar with the warriors of the Tloza, who had raided their farmsteads on the Eastern Cape for several years. The warlike Zulus were infamous because unlike the other tribes of the south, they slaughtered women and children along with the men. The Zulus lived inland from the eastern coast to the south of where the Swazis of Swaziland called home. The Sotho and their cousins the Lesotho, for whom the modern country is named, lived further into the interior. The Ndebele or Matabele were a breakaway Zulu tribe who had carved out a kingdom for themselves in the country now called Zimbabwe. Or Zimbabwe probably in English. Dutch pronunciation. The period of great unrest between 1815 and the start of the Great Trek was a time of incessant war and horror for the Africans of the southeast. In the Zulu language, it is known as the Mafakane, the crushing. In the language of the Sotho, it is called the scattering. The rise to power of the Zulu king Shaka and the Zulu kingdom at the start of the 19th century led to the deaths of between 1 to 5 million Africans. Thanks to this genocide and the enormous tide of refugees fleeing the advancing Zulu impis, much of the southwest was underpopulated by the time the four trekkers of the Cape Colony were searching for a new homeland. In 1832, the first Boer scouts went into the interior to inspect the region that was then called Natal. 
After they returned and reported the land to be empty and fruitful, the first wagon trains began rumbling northwards. One of these, led by Peter de Tief, came in contact with the Zulu king Dingane in 1838, where they agreed that he would cede the region of Tugela if the four trekkers returned cattle stolen by another African tribe. When this was done, Peter de Tief returned to the Zulu king's kraal to sign the treaty, but instead he and his entire party were slaughtered. Dingane's impis, Zulu regiments, attacked the other parties following Peter Tief at Blaukrans and Venen. During the attacks, 41 Fortrecker men, 56 women and 185 children were murdered, but also around 300 black Basutu and Khoikhoi Afrikaans who had come along as servants. Those who took part in the Great Trek were a rather diverse bunch, none of whom were spared by the Zulus. Some time after the Zulu attacks on Peter Tief's groups, a few hundred Fortrekkers sent out a Fluchkommando, an armed group of horsemen, but they were defeated by the Zulus at the Battle of Italeni. Fluchkommando is an Afrikaans compound of the words Fluch, meaning fast, and commando, which is where the modern English use of the word also comes from, following it being borrowed by the British after they fought against the Boers in the Boer Wars. The English use of the word trek or trek is an arduous journey also comes from Afrikaans. Returning to 1838, the four trekkers of other nearby parties were anxious to avenge their fallen comrades and push deeper into Zulu territory. When the first covered wagons crossed the Buffalo River, a scout brought news of a large Zulu army that would soon be upon them. The four trekker commandant, after whom the South African city of Pretoria is named, gave the order to form a lager a ring of covered wagons with the pioneers and cattle inside. 20,000 Zulu warriors attacked the lager for several hours, but the four trekkers held them back and killed 3,000 of them so that the river was coloured red with their blood. The battle to this day is known as Die Slag bei Blutrivier, meaning the Battle of Blood River, and has become an important event for Afrikaner nationalism and the Afrikaner identity. The fact that a few hundred four trekkers could hold out against 20,000 Zulu warriors without losing a single man, woman or child seemed like nothing short of a miracle to the Boers, who saw it as evidence that South Africa was indeed a land promised to them by God. In the 70s, the South African government erected a, a monument on the battlefield in the same place where in 1839 the four trekkers lager had stood. Later on, a monument was also built for the Zulus who died, which is now also associated with Zulu nationalism. There is another monument in Pretoria, which is called the Fortrekkers Monument. The first stones of the monument were laid by the granddaughters of the Fortrekker leaders, Andries Pretorius, Pieter Tief and Hendrik Potgieter, in 1937. After the Battle of Blood River, the Zulu Kingdom erupted in a civil war, when the current king's brother rebelled against him with the help of the Fortrekkers. In the meantime, the Ford Trekkers founded an independent republic, which they named the Natalia Republic, after the British port city of Natal, which is called Durban today. Although the Boers finally had their autonomous republic, the Dutch roots were still clear to see in the colours and composition of their new flag. Despite this, the long arm of the British Empire seemed to be reaching northwards once more, which is why the Boers of Natalia were all too happy to accept the offer of protection by a Dutch merchant in 1842. In reality, the Netherlands hadn't been an important power on the world stage since the early 18th century and had no footholds in Africa from where they could support the Boers against the British. When British troops invaded Natalia in 1842, no help came from the Netherlands. The Boers fought a small battle at Congela, although few casualties fell on either side and the British capture of Natalia continued unhindered and they renamed the territory to the Colony of Natal. The very reason for the Four Trekkers' great trek out of the Cape Colony had been to escape the iron grip of the British government, but now they were once again subject to British laws. The Boers' reaction was the same as it had been then, and the vast majority of Natalia's Boers packed up and trekked inland to found new republics between the Orange and Vaal rivers. This trek would also be full of hardship, as they would have to cross the Drakensberge, meaning Dragon's Mountains in Afrikaans, with their wagons. However, just as they had done in 1835, they reached their goal, and the survivors of the Great Trek founded the Boer Republics of the Oranje Freistaat, the Orange Free State, and the Transvaal, often also called South Afrikaans Republic, meaning the South African Republic. Alright everyone, so this has been my little video on the Great Trek and 
a little bit of background about the Boers. So if you found this video interesting, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to know anything else, uh, or you have anything else to add, any fun information that you think I'd be interested in, then please do comment below, let me know, and I'll try and get back to you. Um, also, if you do like this kind of period in history, I've recently been doing a lot of research on it, then I think I'm going to make some more videos, maybe some stuff about the uh, Boer Wars and some of the Boer tactics which they employed, then I'm probably going to make some stuff about that in the future. So thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.